Hello and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions at the same website where you are you registered? This presentation is being recorded and it will be available within about a week's time at strivescan.com slash WACAC. And now I am excited to introduce the schools that we'll be hearing from during this session. Well, tonight, we'll be hearing from Rochester Institute of Technology, Caltech, Harvey Mudd College, the Illinois Institute of Technology, Missouri University of Science and Technology, and or the Oregon Institute of Technology. And we'll be kicking it off tonight with Rochester Institute of Technology. Mark, you can take it away. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Emblidge. I'm Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York, better known as RIT. RIT is located in suburban Rochester, about six miles south of downtown. The city of Rochester is the third largest city in New York State. Uh, our students come to us from all 50 states and more than 90 countries. And even though we enroll more than 16,600 students, undergrad and grad on our campus, making us one of the largest private universities in the country, our average class size is only about 22 students and our student faculty ratio is 13 to one. We enroll more than 13,600 undergrads, about 2,600 international students, about 2,000 students who identify as African-American, Latin American, or Native American. And then we have a different form of diversity and that we're home to more than 1,000 students who are deaf or hard of hearing. And that is not random. One of our nine colleges is the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. Even though we are an institute of technology, we really are a comprehensive university. In addition to the traditional STEM colleges like computing, engineering, engineering technology, science, and health sciences, we do have a College of Art and Design, a College of Business, a College of Liberal Arts, and again, NTID. All told, we have more than 90 degree programs that we offer, as well as a long list of combined accelerated bachelor master's programs. One of the key things to know about RIT is that we're very career oriented. We want to give you a great education, but we want you to be prepared for what's next. And the best way we know how to do that is through various forms of experiential learning. The one we're best known for is our co-op program. Co-ops are internships, but they're internships that are full-time paid professional work experiences. They are mandatory in many of our programs and an option for basically any student at RIT. And there is a lot of on-campus recruiting that helps students find these co-ops. We have more than 3,400 employment partners around the world. And these are the companies that are hiring our graduates, but also hiring our undergrads for co-ops. This slide shows you how co-op fits into a five-year program like engineering or computer science, as well as a four-year program like business or liberal arts. So our engineering students are required to complete essentially a year of co-ops interspersed over the third and fourth year. Uh, so when they graduate, they've got a four-year degree and they've got a resume that has a year of full-time paid work experience in it. There are a lot of advantages to co-op. In addition to co-op, we have other forms of experiential learning, such as undergraduate research, and that goes on across the nine colleges at RIT. We also have global opportunities. We have our own international campuses in China, Croatia, Kosovo, and Dubai, but we also have other faculty-led programs abroad and more traditional study abroad programs as well. We're also a hub for entrepreneurship and creativity. So if you are a maker, if you're an inventor, someone who wants to start their own business, there is a lot of support for that at RIT. Uh, among other things, we have our own version of Shark Tank we call Tiger Tank. In terms of campus life, we have more than 300 student clubs and organizations. And when there's not a pandemic going on, they're putting on about 1300 events each year. If athletics are your thing, we are primarily a division three school for varsity sports, 
The one exception is hockey. Men's and women's hockey are division one and they are a big source of school spirit. We also have club sports, intramural sports and other recreational activities. An area that's really growing at RIT is performing arts. We don't offer majors in performing arts, but we do have minors in theater and music, and we have a lot of dance ensembles as well. So there's a lot of opportunities to get involved in performing arts, and some of the newer buildings on campus will help to foster that. When you apply to RIT, you apply down one of three paths. The first is to apply directly to a specific major. I want to major in game design. I want to major in graphic design, whatever. And that's what most students do. But let's say you know which college of RIT you want, but you don't know which major in that college, you could apply to one of our college-based exploration programs. So if you're thinking about business, but you don't know if you want accounting or finance or management or MIS, you could apply to the business exploration Use that first year to explore the majors in that college and then declare your major. The third path is the university exploration program. And that's for students who aren't sure which college at RIT they want. So it's a broader exploration option. When we review your application, we're gonna focus a lot on your academic record, especially your high school transcript and all that we can glean from that. We are now test optional across all nine colleges, and that is not a temporary thing. That is our plan going forward. So you can choose to submit SAT or ACT scores, but if you choose not to, you won't be penalized. We do also look at recommendations, activities, any awards you got, the essay that you write. And if you're applying to a Bachelor of Fine Arts program, we also need to see a portfolio. I should say too, we're gonna to put more focus on the grades that pertain to your intended major when we review your application. We do also offer admissions interviews. They're meant to be primarily informative and we do pay attention to demonstrated interest as well. So I, my time is running short here. I wanna give fair time to my colleagues here, but there is my contact information. If you have any follow-up questions you wanna ask, please feel free to email me. Thank you very much and good luck with your college search. Thanks Mark for sharing RAT with all of us. Our next presentation is going to be from Caltech. Hello, everybody. Sorry, I was having a, a few uh, technical difficulties okay. here, um, as is want to happen. Oh, great. So. The screen looks good now. Everything looks good, and we hear you just right. Great. Great. This always happens, especially with tech schools, because we know what we're doing and we do it so often that it becomes second nature and therefore we mess up. So welcome, everybody. My name is Jan Lacoste. I'm Associate Director of Admissions at the California Institute of Technology, also known as Caltech. We're moving over to the West Coast now. Caltech is an intimately sized campus in Pasadena, California, with a significant impact in STEM. You may know Pasadena as home of the annual Tournament of Roses Parade and the Rose Bowl football game. We respectfully acknowledge and honor the Tongva people upon whose ancestral lands our campus is located. Much of what you learn in STEM in your classes today can be traced in some way to Caltech. Think about uh, the theory of quantum electrodynamics or why Pluto's a dwarf planet or earthquake science. Think of these scientists, Frances Arnold. She pioneered the directed evolution of enzymes and won a Nobel Prize in chemistry for it in 2018. She's co-chair of President Biden's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. Or Katie Bowman, who created an algorithm and put together a team that photographed a black hole. She's also on our faculty. An important thing to know about the Institute is that each one of our scientists and engineers is an innovator. The talent, be it talented people who spend their careers here choose to do so because Caltech is known for solving the most difficult problems, often through strategies that have never been tried before. All of our students have access and opportunities to conduct research with these professors. Here you see students working in the Jim Hall prototyping lab, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in the Mars Yard, and in wet labs doing primary research, often through our Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship Program, or SURF. 
Hackers typically do research during the summer, often at Caltech or JPL or at another university through our SURF program. And this gives them the opportunity to work under the guidance of experienced mentors working at the frontier of their fields. We have around 950 undergraduates and a three to one student faculty ratio. Faculty teach all of the classes from the first term 200 person core course to the seminar with five other students and everything in between. Students declare a major, we call them options, toward the end of the first year of study. Uh, it's also important to note that we offer need-based financial aid and we meet 100% of demonstrated financial need. In our residential research community, hackers are creative. Our students live, learn, collaborate, and have downtime on campus in a residential section of Pasadena. In a typical year, 95% of students live on campus, and our students choose from amongst 11 different residences, which boast a variety of living arrangements from singles to doubles to suites, and they celebrate unique traditions and activities. You've probably heard of our pranking culture. In each residence, students can find opportunities to join student leadership, plan and organize special activities such as study breaks, movie night, field trips to the beach, mountains, or elsewhere around LA, and they dine together. We have myriad club, clubs and interest groups, depending on whatever you're interested in, multiple opportunities for music to listen and to perform, 16 NCAA Division III teams, plus club sports, theater, art, the list goes on. In order to prepare our students for whatever field they choose, we give them a solid base upon which to build. We take an interdisciplinary approach to STEM, and it's seen in our core curriculum, which you see here. Regardless of intended major, all students have an interdisciplinary base to anchor their studies. It's also seen in our collaboration. Our students collaborate on problem sets and learn that science is a team sport. Most importantly, they learn how to ask questions when they need help. They also learn early on, based on this, that STEM fields are interrelated. They apply principles used in one class to their work in another. How do you know if Caltech is right for you? Well, at Caltech, our professors will challenge you in every single class. We encourage you to think critically and we foster an environment where we expect you to stretch your intellect. Imagine this scenario. You've been uh, accepted to Caltech, you've decided to call it home for your undergraduate career, you open your Math 1A vector calculus textbook for your first assignment, and this is what you see. What's your reaction to envisioning this scenario? Here's why I'm asking. Mathematics is the bedrock of all coursework at Caltech. The mathematics foundation and starting point uh, for incoming students is rigorous proof-based abstract math. This doesn't mean you have to know how to solve pure abstract math problems before you get there. Most students are not doing that at the high school level. Rather, the, the admissions committee is focused on how prepared you are to learn ways to solve problem sets like the one pictured above. Are you going to be motivated about what you'll learn, Cal, learn at Caltech so you'll be able to solve these problems? Or does this make you say, mm, maybe not? Think about it. This is our list of things you turn in when you want to apply to Caltech. Uh, I'm going to send you also to our website for that. In fact, I'm going to skip right to the last slide because the admissions website has so much more information than I can put on one slide. I encourage you to visit it. You're also welcome to send any questions to admissions at caltech.edu. If you put attention Jan in the subject line, I'll be the one to answer that. And with that, I'll pass the mic along to Harvey Mudd College. Thank you so much, Jan, for presenting on Caltech and sharing that with us. And yes, as she did mention, we are moving on to Harvey Mudd College as our next school. Here I'm here. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Roberto Pena. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Harvey Mudd College. I want to thank uh, Jan and Caltech for giving a land acknowledgement. We too, um, at Mudd and at the Claremont Colleges, also want to acknowledge the Tongo people, which um, the Claremont Colleges are built on. Um, uh, definitely excited to meet you all virtually, right? Um, I'm happy that there's like a light at the end of the tunnel coming here pretty soon, and we can finally interact with our peers in person sometime in the next few months, right? Um, but 
right, the focus here, uh, I think I want to focus on the, on the location really quickly. So we're in Claremont, California, about 35 miles east of Los Angeles. This, we're known as the City of Trees, but our unofficial name is the City of Trees and many PhDs, right? Um, in this picture, here's Harvey Mudd, right? And I, and I want to point this out because within a square mile, there exists what's called the Claremont Colleges, Claremont Consortium. Um, there's five undergraduate colleges and two graduate schools that we all take a part of. There's over 2,000 plus courses and um, that you can cross register for, uh, 6,000 plus undergraduate students, uh, but we do share resources when it's sent to share resources. So we have the benefit of being a small liberal arts college. So everything that you hear about a liberal arts college, you know, personalized education from your professors, you know, um, small, small faculty to student ratio, um, residential halls, all of that is true, but we share resources where it makes sense to share resources like the library, our campus safety, um, some of our like affinity groups, so the Queer Resource Center, the Chicano Latino Student Affairs, Office of Black Student Affairs, Chaplains. We are Division Three as well. Um, there are five schools, but we do separate it into two separate teams. Uh, so Pomona Pitzer, students from Pomona Pitzer are one team, and then students from Harvey Mudd, Scripps, and Claremont McKenna are a separate team. Um, plenty of student orgs um, that you can join across the five campuses. Uh, you're not limited to just Harvey Mudd events, and also there's five different dining halls that you could try, right? Um, so folks in on Harvey Mudd specifically, if there's one thing that I do want you to remember kind of by the end of this six minute talk, right, is this mission statement. This is what we're ultimately trying to achieve with our students. Uh, we're seeking to educate our mathematicians, engineers, and scientists who are well-versed um, in these areas, but also well-versed in the humanities, the social science, and the arts. So you can assume leadership positions in your fields, but also be aware of the kind of impact your work has on society, right? And so take, the, take, take some time to like think about that, like, you know, you know play with it in your mind. This is ultimately what we're trying to do with our students, right? So we're a smaller school, about 900 students. We've reached parity about 34 years ago. We're very excited about that. And our student faculty ratio is eight to one. Academically, this is how the breakdown of your academics is at Harvey Mudd, right? About a third of your courses will be in your major. A third of them will be in a core curriculum that, that exists at Mudd. And then a third of them will be in the humanities, social science, and arts. Um, zooming in on the core here, this is what your core, you and all of your peers will take together your first three semesters, right? So you're taking courses in mathematics, taking courses in physics, in chemistry, in biology, in computer science. You're also taking a course in engineering, right? So um, you can take your third semester, as you can see here on the screen. In addition to all these STEM courses, you're also taking a critical inquiry and a writ one courses, right? So all this, it really, we really foster a, a community of collaboration. So uh, similar to our peers at Caltech, where we also place an emphasis on interdisciplinary learning, interdisciplinary thinking and collaboration. Right, so the skills that you learn from computer science, you'll apply them to your biology course, your second semester, in order to study, for example, DNA sequencing. Um, for engineering systems course, you'll need your chemistry, your, your, your physics, your computer science, your mathematics to work on the underwater robots that our students get to work on semester. Um, you don't have to declare your major until the end of your sophomore year, so you have some time to figure out what it is that you want to do with that common core. Um, you know, to decide if you want to stick to engineering you know, if you want to stick to computer science or bio. These are the nine, these are the 10 majors that we offer on our campus. So you have to have a pretty good idea that you want to study STEM if you're looking at Harvey Mudd. The other portion, the other highlight of our institution is 100% of our students do research, right? So you can start as early as your freshman year. Um, you need to work alongside our faculty. We are a strictly undergraduate institution. So there are loads of opportunities to work with your professors throughout the academic year or through the summers. Um, there's also a full year capstone project. So it can manifest two different ways. It could either be uh, if you're a CS, CS math, or engineering major, you're required to do with this clinic project. Which you get to work with some of these companies listed here, and you come up with solutions for these companies. They come to you and they say, hey, we're struggling with this problem. Can a group of four or five of you help us, you know, figure it out? Um, there are, you could do a senior thesis for non-CS, CS math, and engineering majors. And it's all your original work. You get labs to work on, um, and you can really focus in on the things that you're interested in. I'll leave you with this quick quote for a couple of moments. But the idea is, you know, the focus as an undergraduate institution, the opportunity that students get to, to do research, I think is something that is a highlight at our institute. The other portion, the other third is this the, the focus on humanity, social science, and the arts. This is where the this is where the consortium comes into play. So in addition to taking the, that common core at Harvey Mudd, you have the opportunity to take advantage of all the courses at across the, the four other colleges that exist with us, right? So what we require of you is 10 courses, five of them in a concentration of your choice. You can see the concentration there and then the other five in any classes that you choose from. Uh, it's as simple as going into our registration site and saying, you know, I'm interested in studying a lot. 
show you all the philosophy courses that are um, offered at the five colleges, right? So this is a, a great opportunity to take advantage of the consortium as a MUD student. They are a community or student culture. Um, I think, again, similar to, to Caltech, we do have a pan culture as well. Um, we're a very residential campus as well, and, and students you know, love the community. Students choose to live on campus for four years, or first year is required, but students tend to come back, right? They really appreciate that our students are willing to work hard, willing to, to, to um, push forward, um, and, you know, you know, be a part of a community that's like that. And I think my last slide here is some outcomes. So we do, um, you know, about 23% of our students will go on to graduate school and about two thirds of them will go into industry. Again, all this information is publicly available online. Um, and I encourage you to do that as well. Same thing with admissions, all this information you can find online. Um, so definitely, you know, the, the, the major changes we are optional the upcoming year as well. So this past year we were test optional, this upcoming year we were test optional. Thanks, Roberto. We've got, yeah. we've got to wrap it up. So yeah. students can hopefully grab that information and please be sure to share it in the chat so they can snag that too. I really appreciate everything you shared about Harvey Mudd. Thank you. All right. Our next presentation now is going to be from the Illinois Institute of Technology. This does mark our halfway point. Um, so I just want to encourage students and anyone who's watching to um, our attendees to drop a question in the Q&A. You can leave a question specifically for the schools that have already presented or drop a question in as you are listening to the next uh, three presentations. So Will, thank you so much for being here to present about Illinois Institute of Technology. Absolutely. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, I am excited um, and thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, as uh, was mentioned, I'm with the Illinois Institute of Technology and we are located in Chicago, just a few minutes from the center of downtown. It looks a little farther away than it really is in the photo that you see on the screen. Um, Illinois Tech is a smaller sized institution. We have just about 3,000 undergraduate students and then roughly um, about 4,000 graduate level students. So whole population is just under uh, 8,000 at Illinois Tech. We have a pretty diverse community with all 50 states, as well as more than 80 different countries represented on campus. And when you hear Illinois Tech, you automatically think of some of our most popular programs, things like engineering, computer science, architecture. We have all of those great programs um, and lots of great opportunities in there. But we also have things like behavioral health and wellness. We have a applied analytics program, consumer research, a lot of different opportunities to blend those uh, experiences you might want to have in the STEM or tech fields with something more like a traditional humanities as well. So I definitely encourage all students, not just those who see themselves as a STEM student, uh, to consider Illinois Tech. We have zero impacted majors uh, at our university, so no problems worrying about getting into classes or um, you know, knowing that you're admitted to the major. You know that right away um, here at our university. Um, additionally, all of our classes are taught by our faculty members directly. Um, we want to help you build relationships with them. And um, one of the best ways we can do that is to obviously have them in the classroom with you. Um, some other things that you'll see at Illinois Tech is a very strong focus on hands-on learning. Um, like a few other schools you'll hear from tonight, um, we we know how important that type of education is. And so a few of the ways that we incorporate that into our experience is by a very robust undergraduate research program. Um, our students, as early as that first year on campus, can get involved in undergraduate studies and undergraduate research. Um, some of the examples that we have on the screen here for you, um, our uh, professors are part of the Proton Ring facility. Um, it's located about 30 minutes away from our campus. And we actually helped build that um, back uh, many years ago, or not too many, I guess, 20-ish years ago, so still a, a few years ago. Uh, but that's a proton ring where we do primarily imaging-based health research studies. Um, so we use that kind of like a giant x-ray in some ways. Um, we also have some really interesting work um, that definitely was applicable this past year um, on the way that we're designing buildings and a lot about the airflow in those buildings. Um, it's all interdisciplinary work. So we're having architects work with our civil and architectural engineers. We have students from many different backgrounds being a part of these programs. The other thing you'll see is that interprofessional projects or what we call IPRO at Illinois Tech. Um, this is a hands-on learning experience that every student gets to participate in before they graduate. Um, so it's a great um, opportunity for you as a student to find uh, an area that you're interested in and an area you want to make an impact on. And lastly, we have our Elevate program. And this is all about getting you off campus. Um, you know, we have some great resources, but there is a whole world of opportunities. And Elevate will help you find things like internships or co-ops, think about a study abroad experience in the future, or taking a short course just to help get a little bit more experience in a new area. 
Now it's not all academic uh, at LNI Tech, though it is quite a bit academic. Um, we do have plenty of clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. We have NCAA Division III athletics, as well as intramural and esports programs. Um, so for any video gamers uh, out there. So you have a lot of opportunity on campus to get involved. And as a reminder, you're only five to 10 minutes from the center of downtown. So when you wanna get off campus and take advantage of the city of Chicago, right there at your fingertips. We are a residential campus. Um, we in fact have one of the buildings um, that you see there uh, is was named one of the top uh, 15 in the US for best dormitories. Um, so pretty cool, uh, interesting looking building. We also have two um, that are going to be pretty much brand new. Um, so we have Kasich Hall, which just opened this past year. And then we have Cunningham Hall, which will be opening brand new next year uh, for our incoming class. So definitely a lot of opportunities, uh, a lot of different choices. Uh, what you want from housing, do you want to be in more of an apartment style? Do you want to be in a traditional dormitory style? Um, it's all about finding that fit for you. Now, what the application process looks like at Illinois Tech, we are members of a common app um, and we try to make it as simple as possible for you. So we're going to ask you for a few essay questions uh, as part of the common app. We'll ask you two short supplemental questions and then ask you for a high school transcript, obviously. A letter of recommendation is required. You can submit up to three of those and then we are test optional for the upcoming year. Uh, there is no fee to apply to Illinois Tech, so it's a completely free application. Um, and what we're looking for is mostly an AB average. Um, we want to see how you're doing in all of your courses, but we're going to look really closely at those math and science courses. If you're applying for something like computer science or engineering, really going to look at those. Um, if you're applying for maybe our architecture or business or human sciences, we might look at some of your other experience as well. Now, Illinois Tech is definitely known as a great return on investment institution, um, being uh, high ranked uh, both in the state and as well as out of the state um, for that 20 year um, salary information. We're also known as the best value institution and a lot of that has to do with our scholarship programs. When you apply to Illinois Tech, you are automatically considered for scholarships. They start at a minimum of $10,000 and for some students do go all the way up to full tuition. I say some students, um, we actually award anywhere between about 30 to 60 full tuition scholarships. And all you have to do to be considered for that is apply before November 15th. So think about that uh, for those of you who might be seniors next year. And for those of you a few years, start to, to keep that in mind. Another great experience we have at Illinois Tech is our summer or pre-college programs. These are uh, shorter um, one to four week um, experiences that help you explore an area that you might be interested in. Maybe it's CS, maybe it's architecture. We encourage you to do these remotely this year uh, while we are uh, in these times and hopefully in future years, we'll do those in person. Thank you so much. Um, and I uh, have any questions, feel free to do those in the chat with me. Thanks Will so much for telling us more about Illinois Tech. All right, we're going to be moving on next to Missouri University of Science and Technology. Or hopefully we will. There we go. Hi, Cindy. Hello, everyone. I'll share my screen. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Cindy Welch and I am the Assistant Director of Regional Recruitment at Missouri University of Science and Technology, which is also known as Missouri s and Missouri s and is located in Rolla, which is about halfway between St. Louis and Springfield, Missouri. Rolla is a small city. We have about 20,000 people in the city limits, but about another 50,000 come from nearby communities for shopping and dining and entertainment. Rolla is part of the South Central Ozark Highlands, so you will find many lakes, rivers, streams, and other uh, places where people enjoy fishing, swimming, canoeing, kayaking, and all kinds of other boating activities. There are also caves to explore, zip lines to maneuver, 300 acres of city parks with over 10 miles of walking and biking trails inside the city limits, and it's a really nice balance of urban development and small town charm was founded in 1870 as one of the first technological universities west of Mississippi. So this year we are celebrating our 150th year. SMT is ranked the number one public university in the U.S. by payscale.com. We're also ranked the number one university in Missouri for alumni salary potential. We're also the number one public university in Missouri and SMT has one of the largest career fairs in the Midwest. Our graduates have the best starting salary 
among all public universities in Missouri. And we're also eighth in the nation among all colleges for annual return on investment. ST was also named the 20th safest campus in the nation by the National Campus Safety Summit. And ST um, has a, um, we're a medium sized school and we have about 8,000 students coming from 50 states and about 60 different countries. This past October, Missouri ST received the, sing the largest ever single gift in the history of Missouri higher education. One of our alumni, Fred Coomer, and his wife, June, donated $300 million. Their gift established the Coomer Institute Foundation, which includes a new school of innovation, entrepreneurship, and economic development. There's also going to be new areas for research and construction of new buildings, and it will provide numerous scholarships for undergraduate and graduate students. Missouri s and has a wide variety of majors, including math, biology, chemistry, and physics. We also have excellent humanities, including English, history, philosophy, and psychology. We have an AACSB accredited undergraduate business program, teacher certifications, and pre-professional degrees. Our Missouri s and is best known for our engineering, and we have one of the most diverse offerings in the country. We have 15 different engineering degrees, each with several emphasis areas. We also have a first year career exploration program that introduces students to all engineering degrees. And we have several unique engineering minors, including biomedical, explosives, and humanitarian engineering. So you may be wondering, what is there to do at Missouri ST? Well, Missouri ST has 250 different clubs and organizations that you can get involved with. We have 19 student de design teams, and some of them are top finishers among their competitions. A couple of years ago, our Mars Rover was first in the world, and we've had several of our other cars, solar cars, our Formula SAE, they've all come in um, first or second place as well. There's also NCAA Division II athletics, intramurals, and club sports. We have Greek life, study abroad, band, orchestra, theater, and many undergraduate research, research options as well. So Missouri s and is still accepting applications for fall 2021. Uh, we have a free application and students can apply test optional this year. For those of you who are juniors, you can apply on our application or on the Common App during the summer before your senior year. You will submit your transcript and ACT or SAT score, and you'll be notified within a few weeks of our admissions decision. S is very affordable and we offer merit-based scholarships. We have additional scholarships you can apply for after you've been admitted. And our most prestigious scholarship is our Distinguished Scholars Award. It's $30,000 per year, renewable for four years. So Missouri s and is here to help. We do have a lot of um, offerings. We're currently offering on-campus tours. Uh, we also have many different type of virtual events, including mock classes, one-on-one -on -one chats with counselors and with faculty, um, and much more. So check out our events at visit.mst.edu. And you can also email us at admissions at mst.edu for more information. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Cindy, for sharing more about Missouri m Missouri s and All right, we are coming up to our sixth school of the night. You can see it's going to be Oregon Institute of Technology. So this is a great time students to listen, learn, and put some questions in the Q&A um, since we're getting closer to the end of our time together this evening. Um, all right, so Oregon Institute of Technology, take it away. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining. My name is Monica. I'm an admissions counselor here at Oregon Tech. We're going to move forward. So I first want to touch on a few of our profile and points of pride. So we are very happy to always say that 96% of our students 
um, graduates are employed or enrolled in graduate school upon completion of their degree. Um, this does mean that they are also starting with an average starting salary of $60,000 per year. Um, so not only would you be graduating, but you do graduate and start out with a pretty high salary. Um, we do like to point this out because we are a polytechnic university and our main goal is for you to get hands-on experience to have major success out in the world. Um, so we definitely have you um, get that hands-on experience so you are able to graduate, go out into the field of your choice or further your education, start out with a high salary. Uh, we are the number one school in Oregon for return on investment. And 91% of our undergraduate courses have 30 or fewer students. And that was a pre-COVID number. Um, since we are a smaller school, we are able to accommodate small class sizes. The total enrollment among all of our campuses is about 5,000 students. Our main campus and main residential campus is in Klamath Falls, Oregon, which is in Southern Oregon. We do have 300 days of sunshine here in Klamath Falls, um, but our Klamath Falls campus, like I had mentioned, is our main residential campus. That's where we recommend all first year students to go because they would receive more of a campus experience um, and college experience here in Klamath Falls. Uh, we do have most of our clubs here at Klamath Falls, so 50 plus clubs, as well as most of our academic programs, um, over 40 academic programs. We do participate in NAIA athletics in the Cascade Collegiate Conference. Um, that is our athletic teams are located at our Klamath Falls campus, as well as our residence halls are at our Klamath Falls campus. Um, we are powered by sun and heat, um, so I'll talk about that a little bit later, but we are located in a geothermal hotspot. I did want to go into our degrees very quickly. Um, first, we'll start with our engineering and technology degree. On the right-hand side, you'll see our computer systems engineering technology department or CSET. These are our three bachelor's degrees where we recommend students to look to if they're interested in something computer science related. Over on the left-hand side, you'll see our other engineering degrees and some of them may look familiar to you. One of my favorite to point out is our renewable energy engineering degree. Um, we were the first university in North America to have a bachelor's of science degree in renewable energy engineering. And those students really do get that hands-on experience because like I mentioned, we are powered um, with solar and geothermal power. Um, so they definitely get hands-on experience because we are living in a area with a lot of renewable energy sources. We'll move forward to our tech infused business degrees. Some of these might look a little bit familiar to you like accounting, marketing, and management but then others look a little bit more specialized such as cybersecurity, healthcare management, health informatics, et cetera. And then I will move forward to our health arts and sciences degrees as well. Um, we have over on the left-hand side, you'll see our closed cohort programs. So these programs essentially mean that you have a set of prerequisite courses that you would need to take um, before applying to the professional portion of the program. So all of these closed cohort programs have a secondary application that does make these programs a little bit more competitive because um, of that secondary application. All the other programs that you have seen do only require admission to Oregon Tech. Um, and then our closed cohorts, like I said, would have that secondary application to the professional program. Um, are one of the, or the only university on the West Coast we have all five modalities in medical imaging technology as bachelor's degrees. I do love to point that out. And then over on the right hand side, you'll see our biology health sciences degree. Uh, this degree is for any of our students wanting to go into pre-med, if they want to become a physical therapist or a veterinarian in the future, it's our pre-professional pathway. And then down below, you'll see our applied sciences degrees. Our applied sciences degrees are essentially degrees if you're you know, wanting to gain transferable skills, but not quite sure of exactly what path or career path you want to go on. For example, if you major in dental hygiene, you would probably become a dental hygienist down the line. Um, but these applied sciences degrees might not necessarily slot you into a specific career, but they will definitely give you transferable skills that you can use among many different careers in the future. I want to touch on our first year admissions requirements quickly. Uh, looking at 15 core subject requirements. So four years of English, four years of math, three years of lab science, two years of social studies, one career technical education or fine art course, and one elective. Within those 15 core subjects, we 
are looking for a 3.0 or higher unweighted GPA, um, so about a B average. If you do have below that, or if you aren't sure if you meet that requirement, we encourage you to apply anyway. We would still love to take a look at your application. An important thing to note is we don't require essays, no letters of recommendation, no second language. Um, we are ACT and SAT optional beginning in the fall 21, and we don't even ask for a transcript. Um, your application is a self-report application. So you do report your classes and the grades that you've received in those classes. The only time that you need to submit a transcript is when you graduate um, or if we ask for it during your process. And please ask for a waiver code. Um, we don't want that to hold you back from applying. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you all so much for joining. Awesome, thank you so much, Monica, for sharing more about Oregon Institute of Technology. Um, we still have a few minutes before our session ends, and I know that there are a couple of questions that um, different representatives are still answering in the chat. I wanted to give them time to do that, and also attendees, any last minute, what about, or could you remind me, please throw that into that Q&A. Um, we'd love to get those answers for you. All right, so while we're doing that, if I could have all the presenting representatives come back on camera, can turn on your cameras, get ready to unmute, and we are going to answer um, one question in a round robin format. We are going to start with the uh, start in the order that we presented. So RIT, you are up first, and then as the person ahead of you answers, just feel free to unmike and, and jump in. So I'd love each of you to talk about a favorite um, or significant event tradition that's on campus um, that will give our everyone watching a little bit more insight into the experience for your students. And Mark, RIT, take it away. Thank you very much, Jennifer. There's a number of campus traditions that we have at RIT, but one of the newer ones, it's about 15 years old now, is Imagine RIT. It was the idea of our university's previous president, uh, Dr. Dessler. When he first got to RIT years ago, he said, boy, there's a lot of great things happening on this campus, but people outside of RIT don't know about them. So let's have a day where we really put the spotlight on our students and have them tell our visitors about the kinds of research projects they're doing, the capstone project, works of art and film and literature and everything else. Some years this event has drawn 30,000 people to campus on a single Saturday in the spring. Uh, in the last couple of years, I've actually done interviews with a few students who said, oh yeah, I came to one of the first Imagine RITs back when I was in grade school. And ever since then, this has been the place that I've wanted to go to school. Uh, this past spring, unfortunately, we did have to cancel the event. And for this coming spring, it is going to be a virtual event. Um, but uh, traditionally, of course, it is an in-person event. And it's a, it's a really, really popular event in Rochester. Mine is, uh, my favorite event at Caltech is more student oriented. It's called Ditch Day and it's kind of a combination of Senior Skip Day meets the Amazing Race. The seniors work all year to make uh, theme-based scavenger hunts for the underclassmen. And on Ditch Day, uh, which nobody ever knows when it's going to be except the seniors, they will wake the underclassmen up at the ungodly hour of eight o'clock in the morning by banging on pots and pans and tell them it's Ditch Day, it's Ditch Day sign up for a stack and all day is spent not in class, but solving problems of different types. They could be academic problems. They could be brute force problems. They could be build a cannon to do something or hold a fashion show on the beach. There's lots of different things that happen. And it's just a lot of fun. It's kind of an, it's, it looks ad hoc. There's a lot of planning that goes into it. I think uh, the one that I could think of on top of my head, it's a little more, a little more informal. Uh, it's a, like a 5C uh, human versus zombies game. So um, it's it's like a week long human versus zombies game. Uh, there's an entire app that students have to keep track of who's alive, who's a zombie. Um, yeah, there's an entire like rule book behind it. So it's really fun to see that the students all really engaged in that and not just at MUD, but across the five campuses. Awesome. Um, so at Illinois Tech, I mentioned diversity um, of our campus and our students is, is one of our um, sort of big well-known things. Um, and that's connected to um, an event we call Taste of Illinois Tech. I love food um, and love eating. So um, I am all about that. Um, we get to, to taste foods from different um, regions. We get to learn from different cultural organizations on campus um, and uh, support some charity while we're doing it all, which is great. So. 
Well, at Missouri s and um, we celebrate St. Pat's in a really big way. Um, St. Patrick was the patron saint of engineers, so we've been celebrating for 113 years this year. And so every year it's the best ever St. Pat's. Um, and so there's a large parade typically. Uh, they paint the streets green. Uh, this year it's actually going to be a drive-through parade. So. The floats are going to be one place and people are going to drive through, but usually it's really fun. We also have a celebration of nations. Um, and so we have all the countries represented. They, they have their flags and all that kind of stuff. And I think the coolest part about that is we have camels walking down Main Street in Rolla, Missouri. So I think that's pretty cool too. Um, and then here at Oregon Tech, one of my favorite programs to point out is our outdoor program. So we are located, like I mentioned, in Klamath Falls. Um, very close to many different ski mountains and everything. So our outdoor program puts on um, different trips for our students to go um, at little to no cost to them. So they go skiing, they go mountain biking, they've even gone skydiving. So uh, that's a little more thrilling than I enjoy, but hopefully other people will like it. So that's one of my favorite things here. After hearing all this, I always want to go Google and see pictures of everyone's experiences and learn about those events. I hope that everyone who's watching thinks, I'd like to check that out too, take a little deeper look. Um, well, we have reached the end of our time together today, and I just want to thank everyone for being here. Um, to all of our presenters, thank you for sharing not just the facts and figures of the admissions process and your campus, um, and but also just the passion and energy you have for the opportunities in and out of the classroom for students. Thank you also for all of our students who, and families who have attended tonight or are watching this on replay, thank you for taking the time to learn about these schools. And we hope that you're inspired to take a deeper look, learn more, ask questions, and contact uh, these awesome representatives um, after this program to dig deeper as you work on your college search and decision process. When you all close your windows tonight, there's going to be a link to a very quick four-question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, again, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted. So we hope that you'll sign up for additional sessions and learn more about amazing colleges and universities across the US and around the world. In about a week's time, you're gonna be able to find this session's recording, as well as all other session recordings at the same place where you register for the programs, strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. Again, thank you everyone and best of luck in your college search process. Have a great night. Thanks for being here.